डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू आवर क्लास ऑन वेदर फोरकास्टिंग फॉर एग्रीकल्चर सिक्स दिस इज द सिक्स लेक्चर ऑफ आवर वेदर फोरकास्टिंग फॉर एग्रीकल्चर actually in the first five uh, lectures so far we tried to understand that uh, there are uh, different uh, okay categories of weather forecast first one is the uh, short range weather forecast second one is the medium range weather forecast and the third one is the long range weather forecast in the short range weather forecast which is varied up to 72 hours so now casting is also there which would be covering just in the next few hours 2 to 3 hours to follow also in the medium 0 to 72 hours from 3 to 10 from 3 to 10 days okay that is the medium range weather forecasting extended weather forecasting is also there from 10 days to 1 month so here uh, the long range weather forecast beyond 1 month 1 month we met more one season so this is what the three types of weather forecasting system this is uh, being generated and then disseminated by india meteorological department through a three tier system national weather forecasting center at new delhi and the second one is the regional meteorological centers where regional weather forecasting units are cell, uh, units are cells or departments are there and the third one is the meteorological centers uh, where which are located in the most I mean most of the cases which are located at uh, uh, state capitals now in this class we try to understand it's a very very interesting class very very important class from your uh, not only <coughs> learning but also from examination point of view cloud imagery is cloud imagery is how they are taken in a scientific way Used for up to our agricultural meteorological purposes. That much only I am going to cover. Uh, okay, if you see the solar spectrum, okay, 0.7 to uh, 0.4 to 0.7 microns is the uh, light part V I B G Y O R. So, if at all we are using any band in that the uh, meteorological satellites, uh, uh, cloud imagery is uh, during the daytime only we can see it. Okay, near infrared, to mid infrared, to far infrared. For all these things, you know, even thermal. Okay, uh, the thermal region. So. in in the uh, okay solar spectrum different bands uh, when okay certain uh, sensors uh, having specific capability in any payload uh, when we release in set 1 uh, in set 2 in set 3 in set 3 or okay in set 3 yes also nowadays we are using that one also i told in the just previous class now so here the sensors you know they will be very good uh, responsive uh, for cloud imagery uh, this is there in your syllabus what uh, srf net that's why now see use of cloud imagery is in uh, satellite weather forecasting so we are very very proud mother india is very proud of its own wonderful meteorological okay satellite meteorological department full fledged started working okay from early 80s and what so before that we used to have from 1970 to 82 NOAA uh NDSC and NASA uh, from uh, those sources we used to get the okay data processing it printing it on the okay uh, 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 photographic sheets okay like that now india meteorological department generates different types of cloud imagery what is the topic for discussion today in the weather forecasting for agriculture 6 Use of cloud imagery is in satellite weather forecasting. Cloud imagery is wonderful. Even we, in even okay, any stakeholder will be very happy to see cloud imagery is uh, uh, in the uh, weather forecasting. Now, India Meteorological Department generates different types of cloud imagery is uh, for different domains using Insat 3D, Insat 3D or Imager data for issuing weather forecast. By issuing the weather forecast. cloud imagery is there how these are generated uh, different spectral band images spectral band vision a uh, light okay near infrared mid infrared far infrared thermal infrared mid thermal infrared so all these uh, spectral bands are there using the they use the gray count or we can call it as a digital number values uh, transmitted by the sensor of uh, different scan areas so okay different scan areas what are what are these uh, gray count or digital numbers uh, 0 to 1023 0 to 1023 what are these uh, these are the values of gray count or digital numbers okay they lie between 0 to 1023 
depending upon the quantized energy level by the sensors sensors have got the quantized energy 0 to 1023 is the gray count or digital count in case of uh, image scanner if you see the image scanner of the payload mir we call it middle for the water to half it back uh, tir okay thermal infrared in the thermal infrared we are going to are the thermal infrared one thermal infrared two i have covered extensively in the micrometrology and in the basic course okay i need not repeat it so now now in case of uh, image or uh, channel these are the okay uh, images are generated by inverting the gray count values what is inverting you is the 0 to 1023 from 1023 to 0 where actual gray count you no know? okay where actual uh, gray count so that uh, the cloud appears brighter the cloud should appear brighter by the uh, image by the image whether it is medium infrared or thermal infrared one or thermal infrared two or otherwise the the image should be seen very clearly that is the purpose so that the cloud appears brighter which is similar to visible or short wave infrared visible or short wave infrared images like uh, it should be seen even from the medium infrared thermal infrared one thermal infrared two etc 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 so now if i am not confusing you we should have a brighter image of the cloud is the purpose by using these uh, okay uh, image channels uh, now national uh, usually it is done by at the um india meteorological department satellite meteorological department this is done at that level now so normal images are generated by resampling of the gray count at a coarser resolution and high resolution images are generated at the channel resolution this is a technical term channel resolution and high resolution high resolution means you know if i am looking at you okay without glasses i cannot see you okay i can have you with a very good high resolution when i keep the same thing high resolution image is uh, we can go for very good okay image bright image of the cloud now this is with reference to uh, uh, i what i am interested to say so far is uh, generally how cloud image is now cloud image is are taken from visible okay visible band these are also taken from short wave infrared band these are also taken from the mid wave infrared band visible band short wave infrared mid mid infrared so from these uh, different uh, uh spectral levels uh, we can take it first let us try to understand each one i cover in one minute each one not difficult at all since uh, i covered uh, solar radiation several times okay solar radiation the energy that is coming from the sun without the presence of the medium is a radiation the energy is divided into okay 9% in the short wave um, and uh, 41% in the light part of the spectrum 0.4 to 0.7 okay from 0.7 okay onwards there is a okay 50% of the energy this is what we told so there are different bands are there even within the visible band there is a vib zy war and uh, near infrared uh, far infrared uh, thermal infrared uh, thermal infrared uh, initial uh, mid uh, expanded uh, or extended like that you know different terms are there why i am telling is that uh, for the cloud imagery is uh, visible band so visible band is vib zy war 0.4 to 0.7 microns uh, visible band is useful only during the daytime even in the advanced technology nowadays uh, this visible band has a uh, little significance however being the students of agricultural meteorology in weather forecasting you should know you must know that uh, visible band is also was also used it is now used for some counter verification nowadays uh, i learned from my colleague who are working in the satellite meteorological division okay uh, uh, of india meteorological department even at uh, uh, tropical um uh, tropical meteorology department in pune also so what they say is uh, this uh, visible part is also really useful for counter checking what is that visible part only one or two minutes i will tell regarding the visible part or visible band the visible band is a reflective type the visible band is a reflective type of band and hence it is useful its use is limited and uh, okay here yeah, these uh, uh, in the advanced data technology these are useful only during the day time here most important bit i will tell the objects are essentially transparent in the visible band the objects are that is the cloud 
it is an object is uh, essentially a transparent in the visible band this is the bit you will get 100% why it is transparent i did not say it vib jy was during the day time naturally it is transparent okay okay good because it is a reflective type simple reflective type simple reflective type the second one is the uh, a uh, short wave infrared yes wir we call the short wave infrared what is short wave infrared band here as for as uh, a satellite uh, cloud image is are concerned 1.552 1.7 microns 1.55 to 1.7 microns we call it as a short wave infrared it is also a reflective type of band and hence uh, its use is uh, limited to daytime only okay daytime like a visible band visible band short wave infrared band are useful only for uh, during the daytime purposes they are transparent images they will do wonderful images absolutely no doubt in that even for counter verification as i told so from my senior course i learned for counter verification they are really useful incident ray incident radiation in the short wave infrared uh, is strongly absorbed by water ice snow and reflected by cloud this is wonderful thing absorbed by water ice snow but reflected by cloud this is a wonderful character of the uh, short wave infrared as wir so through this uh, okay melting snow patches are lake ice is seen bright in the visible range while uh, these appear dark in the short wave infrared so therefore short wave infrared images are used to differentiate clouds to differentiate clouds that is rain giving cloud and snow what is a rain giving cloud what is a snow giving cloud so we can differentiate it because why once again i would like to say short wave infrared images are used to differentiate clouds that are giving rains and snow because why because uh, okay why because i told it is strongly absorbed by short wave infrared is what 1.55 to 1.7 microns 1.55 to 1.7 it is strongly absorbed by these three first water ice and snow reflected by the cloud this is what uh, i would like to say and short wave infrared images are also used to monitor cloud radiative properties properties uh, in addition to okay local slow cover daytime fog etc of course there is some problem low clouds are there fog is there low cloud and fog uh, mm, if you temperatures of the uh, soil earth okay where this low cloud this bit will come in the jrf fog is a dash low cloud fog is low cloud so if the surface temperatures of uh, uh fog upper surface temperature fog and uh, land temperature is same it is very difficult to uh establish whether it is a fog or land image that is what okay so however this is this is solved by mid wave infrared that's what we call it as the m uh, w ir mid wave infrared what is mid wave infrared here as far as the uh, india meteorological department satellite meteorological department is concerned 3.9 microns they have taken it as the mir mid wave infrared only 3.9 okay 3.9 microns channel only half minute i will tell before i close this class the mid infrared window has more temperature sensitivity 3.9 microns temperature thermal okay that's what okay okay uh, it has got more temperature sensitivity than thermal infrared thermal infrared okay it is impossible to detect that's what i told have it well it is impossible to detect fog or low cloud in conventional infrared in conventional infrared 10 to 12 microns we take it here uh, 3.9 micro by using this 3.9 microns sensor okay okay uh, these images are very difficult and much to take in the night if the fog top has a similar temperature to that of the adjacent ground this is what i told now in this 3.9 micron channel the water droplets in fog can be differentiated from a land or sea surface at the same temperature because of the emissivity difference this is what traditionally 10 to 12 microns we used to have thermal infrared okay here a uh, middle infrared what wavelength we are using the wavelength we are using 3.9 because of this 3.59 the emissivity difference is there between the fog and <coughs> land so this is that why okay? of course uh, <coughs> in uh, oceanic area there is some problem that's what i would like to read in sun glint uh, 
of course in the, see what happens sun glint appears uh, okay sea surface produces glow in this channel and shows uh, sea brighter than small cirrus clouds that means you know sun glint appears on the ocean that is a small problem which we can okay overcome by using some technologies uh, or by counter verifying with other images thanking you for your very patient hearing